You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter Number 58 looming over the horizon, following the events of Manga Chapter Number 57, the shocking revelation had occurred that Goku had now finally arrived on Earth to further aid his friends in the battle against Moro and his cronies. But the question is, with Goku having to be on Earth before Vegeta, can we expect a final showdown between Goku and Moro that's going to ultimately transcend itself into the finale of this arc? And if this battle results in the finale of the Dragon Ball Super Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc, then what does this mean for the concept of Ultra Instinct Goku, especially when putting him in a situation now and having to battle against Moro? Is it possible for Ultra Instinct Goku to get the job done in completely eviscerating Moro, or does Moro hold a few tricks up his sleeve that is ultimately going to gain him the upper hand against Ultra Instinct Goku? As once more before we begin, if you guys are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball, and anime related, then I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload on this channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below. If you guys are simply stoked, ready, and excited to see Ultra Instant Goku in action again, because now when looking at what's about to happen in the manga, it's as clear as day that Ultra Instant Goku is going to be making another return following the initial battle he had with Jiren in the Tournament of Power, but this time, this is a different circumstance. Stance. We're not following any rules. This is a fight to kill. If Goku's willing to kill, then there are no restrictions for Ultra Instinct. But the question here is can Ultra Instinct last long enough to fully get the job done? Now, in the comment section of my Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter Number 57 review and many other videos discussing this topic, there have been many people that have presented this idea that somehow Goku could end up killing Moro by the end in being the sole victor of this story, which is highly possible. But I'm here here to say that in my opinion, I don't think that Ultra Instinct Goku is going to get the job done. I do think that once Goku goes UI, he is going to wreck everybody. Sagambo, 7-3, Shimoreka, Moro. However, I don't see the Ultra Instinct power lasting long enough for Goku to actually finish the job. I think that Goku is going to have Moro right where he wants him, but ultimately enough, just like he did with Jiren, that power is going to run out because his body is simply not used to such divine power. Of course, if you guys agree with this concept, I would like to get your thoughts on how you guys believe UI Goku is going to square up against Moro if you guys stand with UI, or if you guys believe that UI is going to burn out and Moro is going to capitalize on this, as joining me here today to further discuss this concept idea is my good friend and Dragon Ball YouTuber Emish. Now Emish, this is a very interesting concept to deal with because UI Goku is practically one of the strongest characters we've seen in Dragon Ball hands down, but the question is... Will Goku be able to handle Moro and everyone else outside of Vegeta? Because thus far in Dragon Ball Super, every single time we saw Goku in action, Vegeta in some way, shape, or form was always there present. And to give you some examples, the battle against Beerus, Vegeta was there. The battle against Golden Frieza, Vegeta was there. The battle of the Universe 6 tournament, Vegeta was there. The battle against Black Zamasu and Merge Zamasu, Vegeta was there. The battle in the Tournament of Power and Dragon Ball Super Broly, Vegeta was there. But here, this is different because because Goku's alone, he doesn't have Vegeta to fall back on just in case something ends up happening here. So how do you think Goku's going to be able to handle a situation without Vegeta? And do you believe that Ultra Instinct is capable of getting the job done? Or do you think that by the end, something's going to happen to where Goku simply can't finish the fight? All right, so if you consider how Moro's demeanor is and how he's been acting as of late, he kind of wants to take his time with everybody, wants to see, you know, the kind of power that everybody possesses for the most part. I mean, it's stated in chapter 57 too. He kind of wants to take his time with this meal, this alleged meal, right? So I kind of feel like, you know, his interaction with Goku, whether it be like verbal or physical or a mixture of both, it's going to be the same exact thing where they're going to fill each other out. Goku's obviously stronger. I'm sure more will be able to tell that, right? I mean, and Gohan even says, you know, both Goku and Vegeta are training to beat you. And even though more doesn't really give a damn, 
you know, the main point is that it doesn't it doesn't mean that Moro will not be willing to acknowledge or see what Goku can do now, especially. So I think a good way to set it up would be, you know, Goku comes in, you know, he one shots the off season Android twenty one that we just saw in this chapter, and then he kind of just goes in to fight Zagambo and just like raccoons him. You know, it's something like something along the lines of that. I think that kind of sets the stage for whoa, okay, hold on. You know, this guy was just no diff in Gohan seventeen, Piccolo and everybody and their mother, and now all of a sudden Goku's just here like just recooming them you know so i I, that that would set the precedent i think that would set the stage for a really exciting chapter um and even if we don't get much action in the actual chapter itself that that feeling of oh here we go you know that's what you want right when you especially knowing that goku came to earth now and he does his signature like his, his signature manga pose and it's just like all right goku's here it's about to get real well now we're all just waiting on vegeta right but it's kind of like how he did it in um in planet namek Right to fight Rukum and company. It's, it's what he did at Battle of Gods. It's what he does all the time. Goku just is, he's always fashionably late. So that's that's a really good way to set it up. As far as like him, you know, going up against Moro again, Goku has a habit of, you know, just taking his time. <laughs> he's a slow starter, right? Even though he knows what Moro's capable of, he knows Moro can just take his energy, can just steal his chi and all this other stuff. But I think the way Dragon Ball tends to handle things, especially, especially Goku's character, he always wants to see what you know his opponent can do now, and vice versa. That that's just always the sage, and it, it, it's always what has brought people closer to Goku, whether they're an enemy or whether they're a friend, or just a sparring partner. It really doesn't matter. So I think ultimately they're just going to flex around for a little bit. Obviously, the stage is being set for Vegeta to inevitably make his way to Earth as well. Um, I mean, in the off chance that he just doesn't come to Earth at all, it just stays on your Okay, like, hey, Goku got it. Imagine how angry the fandom would be. Right, but it kind of just like it it, it, it kind of makes room for giving Vegeta a reason to just develop a little more. But I, I highly doubt that that's going to be the case. I'm just throwing it out there just for the sake of like conversation or so, something like that. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I, I think they'll take their time. Um, as far as like Goku using Ultra Instinct, we have every reason to believe that that's the power that he has to tap into. That that's the state of being that he has to tap into if he's going to stand a chance against this guy. Whether or not it's going to work, I personally don't know. Um, I've always, I, I, I mean, logically, I think that if you're fast enough, you can probably, you know, kind of uh, stop Moro from taking your chi passively because something that's done passively is something that re- would require X amount of time. Like, he doesn't just do it in one shot, right? Like, he does it over five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, right? So I think Goku being fast enough, obviously, he'd just be able to box him up a little bit. But again, Moro, we haven't really seen what Moro can do for a while now. And obviously, Moro is just tapping Sagambo on the back and all of a sudden he's just no different Gohan and 17 and everybody else so it's like it's pretty impressive to think about it and I think the amount of power creep that we're about to see over the course of the next few chapters it's really going to be something to uh to talk about for sure now what's interesting is I don't think a lot of people are sleeping on Moro I think that people do get behind the concept idea of what Moro can introduce but there's something very ominous about him like you said we really haven't seen him in a physical confrontation. He's always been using his magic, and that's a good thing, because in Dragon Ball Super, we've often seen characters basically display raw power, but here, it's a little different. So, what about in terms of circumstance? We have three different options of choosing here, because we have option A, Goku uses Ultra Instinct, but ultimately burns out and loses. Option two, Goku ultimately uses Ultra Instinct and finishes the job. Or option number three, Goku doesn't use Ultra Instinct, Vegeta comes back and then the fight continues in resulting with Ultra Instinct Goku having to be a thing after Vegeta arrives and thus clearing the battle with Moro because I think when looking at this this could go either way and a lot of people in the fandom have wanted to see something different for so long people have been screaming about unpredictability and how the manga needs to introduce a different element an element of surprise so if you were to ask me right now yes I think Ultra Instinct Goku is stronger than Moro I think that Ultra Instinct Goku could stomp out Moro, but it's just about timing. It's a matter of being actually able to get the job done without burning out. Now, do I think that he's going to get the job done without burning out? No, because in my opinion, at some point, as dominant as Goku's going to be, at some given point, he's going to burn out, just as we've seen before, which basically creates a narrative for Goku to continuously train himself to get used to this until ultimately enough, it's time for him to actually use this power to its fullest content. So, in your opinion, where do you stand with these three options, and what do you think is going to happen by the end? Yeah, I agree with the third option. I think that would be pretty pretty damn cool. Because, uh, I mean, let's be realistic here. Goku knows Vegeta is training. Even if he doesn't inherently know where Vegeta is or whatever the case is, right? He doesn't know, right? He doesn't have to. He knows Vegeta, and Vegeta knows Goku. 
they know that they're doing something. They're finding some kind of means to get stronger in, in hopes to defeat Moro. And they also understand that they have worked together many, many times before. You know, we as fans understand that they have worked together many, many times before to defeat a common enemy, right? Especially if that, if that enemy is an imminent threat to existence itself. So, you know, the idea of Goku just handling it himself, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think, again, like I said prior to this, um, he's, he's going to flex a little bit see how you know and, and obviously more wants for goku to flex a little bit etc i just I, I don't think ui would at most maybe i could see ui matching moro right like omen ui omen matching moro to some extent but then moro just pulls out a i was hiding my true intentions you know like he just pulls out another one of those kind of panels and he just like powers up and it's just like okay uh ultra instinct is not enough and vegeta shows up and he's like you know kakaroto <laughs> step aside right or and then Vegeta gets his turn, but then ultimately they have to work together to do something. Um, you know, as for techniques and what exactly they'll do, I don't know. It's way too difficult to tell. Even speculation is extremely limited, if anything. Uh, but if I had to choose, I would say that I would like to see UI Omen, I guess, to some extent match Moro. I don't see any indication of Moro understanding what Ultra Instinct is or like what that is in general. Because he just seems to not care. I mean, when he came to Earth, he was like, well, I see those two aren't here. Right, so it's kind of like he came there. He could sense Chi, so he knows whether they be there or not. So it's not like he had to physically come on Earth to look at the gang and say, "Oh." Then he realizes Goku and Vegeta isn't there. No, he can obviously feel that they aren't there. I don't know if he can feel where they are. Like if Vegeta's, you know, on Yara Drive training, getting stronger, and if Goku's somewhere getting stronger as well. I don't know if he can do that. And even if he could, again, it kind of gives us like a Majin Buu arc kind of feel, where Super Buu could feel Gohan training, you know, on the Supreme Kai's planet. And he, and he was just waiting for him to show up. And then it also gives us a feel of like ROF where Goku just does, like you said, Goku does something and then Vegeta comes in, whoops his ass. And then all of a sudden, oh, uh, goodbye earth. And then they have to like reverse time. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm saying, but we are getting those kind of feels. And then we're also getting the, the Saiyan arc feel where everybody was kind of required to defeat Vegeta. Over here, you still have Krillin there. You have Rush, like everybody's there, right? And then it also brings us to the Cell games. Gohan versus Cell, where everybody had to help out a little bit to defeat a common enemy. And then we're also getting flashbacks to Planet Namek, where Goku just shows up casually, you know, fashionably late, like he does in every arc. So th there's, I feel like there's a mixture of, like, every arc here. And then we can bring it back to the Cell arc, where Moro's just talking about, like, you know, ah, I'm gonna eat you all up. Like, he's just gonna, you know, he's talking about eating, eating people and, like, eating the planet and all this other stuff. Same thing with Majin Buu and all these other, you know, enemies that we've seen before. And I, one thing I will say about Moro, what I like, is that he's actually utilizing his henchmen. And they're actually effective, right? They're, they're, there's, an, there's an actual positive impact there. Like, we're not just reading the chapter and going, oh my god, just get over with, or just get it over with, please. No, 7-3 is really cool. Sagambo now is just coming out of nowhere, just beating people up. You have off-season 21, who's giving Roshi and Krillin work. You know, so, I mean, and then Yamcha, whatever, Yamcha. And then Tien, oh my god. Again, I don't want to go off on a tangent. <laughs> Tien's just garbage. Chatsu had to handle, you know, uh, Megeto over there. The fake Megeto. I mean, you can argue it's because, you know, he's like a monk now, but still, come on. It's not hard to call someone a pile of trash. You know, so it's whatever. But ultimately, there's a lot of, like, good things happening here. Moro knows he's strong enough to know diff everybody, but he's actually utilizing his actual henchmen here. And then you kind of incorporate... So it'll it'll actually when when Goku and Vegeta actually do something now and they do something to the henchmen, there's a lot of positive uh, reaction out of that because of what we've seen them do, you know. So I think as far as like will it be enough? Probably not because you know they're setting Vegeta up like they're really working on Vegeta right now. Not I don't know if they're working on him to be like the main guy, but it's obvious that they're working on him not for him to just chill over there. You know, and just pull a Goku and go off training while somebody here is destroying the planet. <laughs> you know, they're not doing that. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that if anything, UI Oma could just match Moro. And then, but Moro's not really like going all out. As for like Moro fighting, it's kind of weird because we haven't seen him go hand to hand too much. Like, he's mainly just using his magic. And, you know, I, my, my first impression is my first glance I'm thinking okay well UI Oma could just dodge all that and he could just blitz him and just two piece this Moro guy and Moro just goes down like I haven't actually seen you know I don't know if Moro can take like definitive strikes from for, from a being who's actually you know as strong as him if not stronger you know and obviously we'll be able to see that over the course of the next few chapters but again there's still a lot that we don't really know about Moro, especially about him in his prime. And now he's kind of talking about how, you know, he can just get stronger and just keep doing these things. And 
we don't we have no reason to believe that he actually has a limit to his power which is it's been a while since we've seen that like we've always speculated about people with unlimited potential but this isn't the same thing this is just moral just yeah man i don't really have a cap so good luck and yeah so that's why it's kind of difficult to gauge or even discuss how ultra instinct would fare off i think obviously it is foreshadowed for sure we're gonna see it we, we should see it and we're bound to see it i agree i think we are going to see it but i'm just worried about the overall execution of what ultra instinct is going to be like because keep in mind once this manga ends up being adapted in the form of an actual anime and toy animation begins to animate all of these pages in the form of an actual episode we're going to be seeing a different version from the manga when compared to the anime because it's always been that way before but i really am concerned to see how they're going to handle ultra instinct because i don't want want Moro to be able to rival Ultra Instinct, but I don't want UI Goku to simply one-shot Moro either. I want Moro's magic to really mess with Ultra Instinct a bit, but in your opinion, what do you think the overall endgame is going to be for Goku's character in this arc? Is he going to be the victor? Is he going to be just someone that kicks back and being a support character? Like, what do you think the overall end goal is going to be for Goku's character once this arc closes out? You know, Goku's always needed help for the most part right he's never done it on his own like he doesn't really do things on his own yeah he's the guy who's willing to go uh, go ahead and challenge someone who he has no chance on be of beating by himself but he knows that he has a crew there right and you know half the time he has to like really like pressure vegeta to help him but vegeta ultimately ends up doing it in some way shape or form right even though he's kind of being like a cuck about it but ultimately you know it's if the if the if the script is kind of being set up for Vegeta to be the be all end all, fine. But he's not going to be able to do it alone. I don't think so. I don't think that would be a good way to put Moro out of his misery, right? Or whatever. Um, I, I think they're ultimately both going to have to rely on each other in one way or another. Now, if Vegeta just comes in, swoops in, and just hey, okay, that's it's the Vegeta show. Um, yeah, I'm not even talking. I'm not even saying this as a fan or as as a fan of Goku or Vegeta. I, I'm, it has nothing to do with that. It's just a matter of oh well, damn. I was used to the teamwork kind of thing. You know, they were both training for something, and we've seen both of them fight Moro. So what made them decide to go one on one all of a sudden, other than the, t the other than the usual typical Saiyan pride kind of a thing? You know. So at that point, I kind of want to see both of them work together to kind of smack this guy around. Um, it, it's, it just really depends on how Ultra Instinct is portrayed and how whatever Vegeta's doing is going to be portrayed. And then ultimately, it really depends on whether or not we can actually see Moro actually throw down now. Because like I just said prior, I mean, we haven't seen that much from him. He just steals planet's energy and eats it, and there you go. Like, that's, that's what he does. He, you know, uses magic tricks and stuff like that, and there's only a limit. There's, I mean, there's a real limit to that, right? And obviously, you know, I think Boo's still asleep or something, right? And then, you know, he was really effective against Moro before becoming his prime and stuff like that. So, you know, the way the, the, there's been a lot of twists in the in the in the Moro arc so far, and I think uh, if I had to choose, I would say that I would like to see both of them do it. But it doesn't really matter who gets the kill. If Goku gets the kill and Vegeta helped, then Vegeta could still take the W in in, in some sense because even though Goku did you know finish him off, he didn't do it alone. And the same thing goes for Vegeta. If Vegeta finishes him off, he didn't do it alone. He needed Goku's help, you know. So I think we're at a point where now these two guys kind of realize, hey, yeah, we're both going to need each other's help. We both have to get stronger through our own means, but we both have to find some way to defeat this guy. It's not a matter of like, oh, Vegeta is just trying to figure out a way to beat him by himself. Sure, that could be the case, but somewhere along the line, it always comes back to teamwork. You know, it's kind of like the whole thing that we just trying to teach them as well about working together and all this other stuff. And in some way, shape, or form, every script that we've seen so far kind of indicates that. Unless it's like a tournament setting, you know, like the Universe 6 tournament where it was one-on-one. -on -one. But everything outside of that, to defeat a common enemy, they generally have to work together, and I'm okay with that. See, that's going to be interesting, and I think that it would be really cool to see Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta team up with MUI Goku to battle this guy. I mean, that, that teamwork right there would be, I think, overwhelming even for Moro, but it's a matter of victory. I don't think that Ultra Instinct is going to get the job done because Goku's going to cave within himself. I think that Goku is going to aim to kill, but he can't finish the job, or at least he won't, because something is going to come in between him and victory that is going to allow 
allowed Vegeta to step in and basically just try to claim the fame from there. So again, we want to get your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you guys believe this is all going to end? Is it going to be as a result from Goku? Is it going to be as a result from Vegeta? Is someone else going to be getting in the mix of things? I really want to know because, you know, this is going to be creating a division in the comments between Goku fans and Vegeta fans, but to me, I think this is Vegeta's time for now. I think Goku should have his arc later, because if you think about it, Goku kind of had his arc in the T.O.P. by getting this new power and being able to break his limits and all these things, so I think that it's more than suitable right now to give this to Vegeta, but then again, anything could happen. So again, thank you all so much for your time. Again, if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button, guys. It's free. It's easy. All you have to do is simply click one button, and that's it. You're subscribed to the channel. Give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoyed and cannot wait to see more. I really appreciate this, guys. Again, we're almost, we're very close to 700,000 subscribers, so make sure you guys spread the word. Hopefully enough, we can get there by the end of March. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. Check out Emish's channel. I will leave a direct link to his channel located down below. He's doing Dokkan content. He's doing super content. He's doing some really dope content that I think you guys ought to check out. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Tune back in for the next video and I'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. And the quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below. So be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and Gaming, titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, IG3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unreal End Gaming. Also follow Unreal End Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck's up, on? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh-oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Ed gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k 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 <laughs>